Good morning. Welcome to Church of the Trinity, whether you're online or in person. Um, I hope that you received one of these bulletins when you came in. It's got all the words that you're going to need. Um, there are also a couple hymns that we'll sing. They come out of the blue book that's called a hymnal. And our first hymn is going to be hymn number 135. So if you want to grab one of those, you're going to probably need that. We're going to sing verses 1 and 4. So just 1 and 4, first and last. But let me begin with a moment of silent prayer. I'm going to ask you to stand, please, right where you're at. I'm inviting us to have a time of quiet that we might, in our prayer, ask God just to fill us, to be in this place, to give us being, well, the sense of being fully here. Let's just pray. Amen. Our opening processional hymn is Songs of Thankfulness and Praise, hymn 135, verses 1 and 4. Joining us again at the peace. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's sing our Gloria. You can find it in the hymnal at S280, but here are the words right there in your bulletin. Let's sing.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come down to you again, for Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 99, found in your insert, please read responsibly by whole verse. The Lord is king, let the peoples tremble. He sits enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth quake. The Lord, the Lord is, is great in Zion. Zion. He, he is, is exalted, exalted over all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Holy is he. Mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Extol the Lord our God. Worship as his footstool. Holy is he. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also was among those who called on his name. They, they cried, cried to the Lord, Lord and he answered. answered them. He spoke to them in a pillar of cloud. They kept his decrees and the statutes that he gave them. O oh Lord, Lord our God, God you, you answered, answered them. You were a forgiving God, God to, them, to them, but an avenger, but an avenger of, of their wrongdoings. wrongdoings. Extol the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. A reading from the second letter of Peter. We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory saying, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by human will. But men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Six days after Peter said that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them. And from the cloud, a voice said, this is my son, the beloved. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please pray with me. Holy Spirit, come into this place and into our hearts that we might catch a glimpse of Jesus, our Messiah and our King. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A few years ago, I became part of a, a select group of Americans. It turned out that I had my identity stolen. Now, I don't know how many that is, like millions of Americans have experienced this, and it's not one of those fun things to go through. Identity theft is not an easy thing to resolve, and so if you have gone through that, then yeah, I am so sorry about that. I know what it feels like. See, I, some guy in Florida got my social security number from some breach somewhere, I don't know, and he decided that he was going to open up for me an offshore account in Puerto Rico. And so I got an email from the bank telling me that, uh, welcome to our bank family and here's the charges that you have incurred. And I remember thinking, this is a problem. I have got to do something about it. So I, I did not reply to the email. I mean, I didn't know if that was its own phishing scam. So what I did is I looked up the name of the bank online and I got their phone number and I gave them a call and I talked to a guy who sounded pretty legit, but I wasn't going to risk it. I started asking him all my questions, the same kinds of questions that you would have. How did this happen? Why didn't you contact me? Who was it that did this? How much is it gonna cost me? What's going to happen to my credit report? You know, all of the important questions that would happen or occur to you if you had your identity stolen. And the guy patiently answered everyone. Just one after the other, he kind of laid it all out there. And then I finally finished asking my questions and he started asking his questions. Only thing is, they were really personal questions. Like, what is my full name? What is my social security number? What is my mother's maiden name? And at that point, I'm like, ah, no, 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 no. No, that, this isn't gonna work. All I want from you is to close the account, reverse the charges, and wipe it off of my credit report. That's all I really want to do. Can we do that? And I could hear him take in a deep breath, and he must have been hoping that it would sound as patient as possible. But in a bit of exasperation, he said, I am sorry, sir, but if you are going to fix this mess, 
you have got to prove to me that it is you. I thought, yeah, that's probably true. He's like, you've got to give me proof of ID. Otherwise, I can't do any of this stuff. He wanted to know that I really was who I claimed to be. Now, I'm talking about this whole identity theft challenge because it got me to thinking that today's transfiguration story is exactly the same challenge for Jesus. If you want to fix this mess, you have got to prove that it's really you. That's what the transfiguration story is about. Because what happens is, is that Jesus comes into the midst of this world and he actually begins to change things. He says stuff. He imparts all kinds of wisdom. But here's the thing. If it's not really God in our midst, then none of that stuff really matters. If he's not the Messiah, if he's not the Son of God, then why bother listening to him? You see, the world doesn't need another religious know-it-all who is spouting opinions claiming to speak for God. What the world needs is real God to step into the midst of this mess and actually begin to set things right. It matters that Jesus is who he says he is, which is why we have the transfiguration story. In fact, this story is in all four of the Gospels. Clearly, it is an important thing for us to understand. And here in Matthew, it's in chapter 17, but if you actually looked at Matthew chapter 16, you would see that that chapter is all about identity. It's all about asking the exact same question. The Pharisees ask him, give us a sign to prove who you are. Jesus doesn't. Then Jesus asked his own disciples, who do you think I am? You see, it's all about identity. And when Peter gets it right, Jesus begins to tell him, this is what that means. I will be going to the cross, and then Peter blows it. No, no, that's not going to happen. Now we get to verse, the chapter 17, and it begins with Jesus proving his identity. You know the story. They go up on top of a mountain, Peter, James, and John, and Jesus. It's evening. They're there praying. The disciples are tired. It's probably been a long day. And then something on that happened changes them. They experience the transfiguration. And in that moment, three things happen. In fact, there are three proof of ID that Jesus gives them and us to convince us that Jesus really is the Messiah. Three of them, and you see them right here in here, the same that you and I would use. The first proof of ID that Jesus gives them to prove that he is the Son of God is a photo ID. Yep, a photo ID. You know, you would do the same thing. First thing that I would do is I'd pull out my wallet. I'd show my driver's license. On my driver's license, there's a picture of me. They can look at both of us. The TSI guy says, pull down your mask. And there you go. You can see us. You know that I am the person I claim to be. Jesus does the same thing, but not with a little tiny card issued by the state of Nebraska. What Jesus actually does is on that mountain, he shows them his photo ID, and it's the transfiguration. Look at verse number two. It's on page five, Matthew chapter 17. Verse number two says this, and Jesus was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. That's the photo ID I'm talking about. Because in that moment, it's almost as if what Jesus did is he just kind of opens up the humanity and the divine starts to shine out. Human people don't do that. None of us are going to shine like the sun and be dazzling white. Jesus does because when he shows his picture ID, they look at that and they are freaked out. That is not human. That's divine. And he does that to convince them and us. But, like the guy on the phone, one form of ID is not enough. You need more. And so, Jesus does that. He goes on, and he has a second form of ID. And this time, it is getting people who are known to vouch for you. You know, it's someone who is in authority that could say, you really are who you claim to be. That is another way that we can identify ourselves according to the government. 
Jesus does the same thing. That's what verse 3 is all about. Verse 3 says this, Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Now clearly these disciples are still reeling from the whole transfiguration, but they are, have enough sense to notice these two people, and there's Moses and Elijah standing there talking to Jesus. And in a sense, Moses and Elijah, their whole point is to be there to prove and vouch that this Nazarene on this mountain is the Messiah. Think of it this way, Moses represented all the law, Elijah all of the prophet. These two people were the most trustworthy and respected heroes in the Jewish faith, in the whole of the Old Testament. And all of the Old Testament was pointing to this moment where the Messiah, God in our midst, would show up. So when Moses and Elijah are there, the reason that they're there isn't just to talk to Jesus, but it is to prove to them and to us to vouch that this Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. That's the second form of ID. And the third form of ID is something you and I don't get, at least not in my own personal experience, but Jesus does. And that second, third form of ID is a call from the cloud stating his identity. That's what verse number five is. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, this is my son, the beloved, with him I am well pleased. Listen to him. You see, that voice speaks out of the cloud, and it's like this big neon sign points right down, and it says, if you don't believe the transfiguration, if you don't believe Moses and Elijah, then believe me, that is the Messiah, the Son of God. And then the voice goes that extra mile, and that voice is the voice of our Father in heaven. And God says, listen to him. Do what he says. Believe what he tells you. Live your lives the way that he is telling you to live your lives. And he's saying that not just because Jesus is another great moral teacher who actually has some ideas that could be beneficial to humanity. He's saying that because of his identity. Because this one person is God. And if God is speaking in our midst, we need to listen to him. You see, Jesus goes to an awful lot of trouble to prove his identity. And he knows that because he understands the importance of that to you and I. And once I understand that, then all kinds of things become possible. Jesus was willing to give us all of that. But I have to say, looking back on my own experience, I was not very willing. You see, once I got my head around that I had a problem, that there was things that I needed to do, I asked the guy on the phone, so how do I prove my identity? And he began to give me a list similar to the one I just gave you. He said, well, you need to give us a copy of your photo ID. You need to give us a copy of the police report. You need a notarized affidavit that it is actually you. You need the most recent utility bill with your address on it. And I'm thinking to myself, what? Finally, he's done with his list, and, he, and I asked him, I said, is that all? And he says, yep, that should do it. And I said, no way. <laughs> I'm not going to send him all of that stuff. I mean, I'm thinking in my head, this is exactly what an identity thief wants me to give them. In a sense, it's like a hacker jackpot. If I gave them all of that information, man, my whole life would be gone. I wouldn't even be me. And I'm thinking, this is not right. So I asked him the question that you probably would be thinking about. And I said this to him. How do I know you're not the bad guy that started this mess in the first place? Good question. He had a good answer. He says... If I was the bad guy, do you really think I would be wasting this much time answering your questions? <laughs> but, oh, geez, the good point, because we had a half hour conversation. And then he said, besides, Mr. Leon, ultimately, you are going to have to choose to trust me on this. And I thought, he's right. And doesn't that 
kind of work the same way with God. I mean, sure, I can do all kinds of research. I can freeze my credit and get the police report and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, I really do have to make a decision to trust this person. Every time someone tries to prove identity to you, it is a leap of faith. It is you choosing to believe this person. Sure, examine the evidence, but at the end of the day, I'm going to have to trust or not. All the things that Jesus does to convince us of his identity and still the decision gets left up to you and to me. I remember putting all that stuff into the mail and sending it off and crossing my fingers and saying my prayers. And it was not an easy thing. I, I don't do that kind of thing very easily. And then I waited. One month later, I got a, a letter from them. Good news. They said, you have convinced us that you are you. Whew. Glad I am me. We have reversed the charges. We've closed your account. There is not a problem with your credit report. And then there was like this PS that seemed a little cheeky to me. It says, now that we've cleared that up, wouldn't you like to open an account with us? <laughs> and I thought to myself, it's a good question. They now know that it's me and I trust them. And isn't that the foundation of a relationship that could last a lifetime. See, that's what God is working on you and on me to get to. That point in the relationship where the foundation is rock solid, I know who I am and I trust Jesus because Jesus is the Messiah. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that you went to the trouble to come into our midst to reveal yourself to convince us that you are real, that you are the Son of God, that you are our Lord and King. And what we ask is that you would help us, not just in this moment, to trust you, but to live the rest of our lives, trusting every single day that you are our Savior. Amen. Would you please stand? The service continues with the Nicene Creed, which you can find starting on page six of the service bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takes away the sins of the world, cast your eyes of mercy on your people who entrust their prayers to you, responding, hear us, God of glory. For the light of Christ that never fades away, that it may shine through our words and actions, revealing the saving grace of the anointed one, let us pray. Hear, hear us, us, God of glory. That the leaders and people of every nation may be willing to pay the price of peace through compromise, compassion, humility and forbearance, let us pray. 
Hear us, God God of glory. For relief for those who live with debilitating anxiety and to those who bear the scars of poverty and emotional desolation, that they may experience the fruits of your eternal and holy presence, let us pray. Hear Hear us, us, God God of glory. In thanksgiving for our sacred fellowship with Christ, May we move from strength to strength in our spiritual life so that its fruits may flow into our workplaces, schools, and neighborhoods. Let us pray. Hear Hear us, God God of glory. For the baptized who have entered into their eternal rest and for those whose faith is known to God alone, that our eternal judge will look kindly on their souls. Let us pray. Hear Hear us, us, God God of glory that the true light that enlightens even the far reaches of the universe and the deep recesses of the sea will open our eyes to the beauty of creation and encourage us to be good stewards of its bountiful gifts. Let us pray. Hear Hear us, us, God of glory. Lord, we add to these prayers our intercessions for the people of Turkey and Syria. We ask, Lord, for mercy and grace, provision and protection, and healing, please. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as you are able, please kneel as we join in a time of confession. (laughs) Together, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Together, let us say, have Have mercy mercy upon us, us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive forgive us our sins known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet one another in peace. Peace online. You may be seated. There's several announcements I want to point out to you. If you look on page 13, there's some information there in the bulletin. Um, Lent starts on Wednesday. It is Ash Wednesday that is coming up. So just if you're in the note, Lent starts on Wednesday. That means on Tuesday, we have our Shrove Tuesday Pancake Supper. Um, You can see that it's from 4.30 to 7 o'clock. Uh, there is a charge, five o'clock, five dollars per person, twenty dollar max, I think, for the families. Did I get that right, Nicole? All right, perfect. Um, and it's from four thirty to seven, so you can drop in whenever you want to come. And then on Wednesday we have Ash Wednesday services, and we have three services that day here in person: seven a.m. in the morning, noon and then 7 p.m. And the 7 p.m. service will be live streamed so that if you're with us online, you will be able to join us that way. So I'd encourage you, um, find one of those service times that would work for you. There's information on our devotionals. Um, You can see we've got our men's lunch and learn that's happening today in the memorial room. But if you turn to the next page, there's a couple things I wanted to point out. Um, We're still taking signups for Windows on the Cross. That's our Lenten program happening on Wednesdays. There's an announcement in there about the women's ministry debut event, and I got that wrong. So, like, totally my fault. Don't don't believe anything I tell you (laughs) about that specific announcement. 
Um, that isn't going to happen on February 26th. It's going to be happening later, and you'll hear more information about that. Uh, the other thing is the kids are going to be joining us here in just a second. And uh, next Sunday, on February 26th, the kids that have been going out are going to actually uh, do the offertory. Uh, they're going to be singing to us what is that they have been learning. So I would encourage you, bring them all back. The bigger the choir, the more beautiful the sound, especially if it's your kid that's up there singing. So welcome back, Abner. Good to see you. Glad you're here. Um, are there any birthdays or wedding anniversaries that we could pray for today? Island's got a birthday. Carla, Carol, all birthdays. Right here. No more birthdays, no more anniversaries. All right. Let's pray for these birthdays. Watch over your children, O oh Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Yes, indeed. Ascribe unto the Lord the honor due his name. Bring your offerings. Come into his courts with praise. You are the source of life I can't be left behind No one else will do I will take hold of you Cause I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue. Where else can I go? There's no other name by which I am saved. Capture me with grace, I will follow. My heart is yours, for life I need your hand, in mine no one else will do. I put my trust in you, I need you Jesus to come to my rescue, where else can I go? There's no other name by which I am saved. Capture me with grace. I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue. Where else can I go? There's no other name by which I am saved. Capture me with grace. I will follow. I will follow you, I will follow you, this world has nothing for me, I will follow you, this world has nothing for me, I will follow you, this world has nothing for me, I will follow you, this world has nothing for me, I need you Jesus to come to my rescue. Can I go? There's no other name by which I am saved. Capture me with grace. I need you, Jesus, to come to my rescue. Where else can I go? There's no other name by which I am saved. Oh no, capture me with grace. Won't you capture me with grace? Come and capture me with grace. I will follow you. I will follow you. 
I will follow you. I will follow you. We continue our worship with the great thanksgiving, and you can find this on page 8 in your bulletin. So please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this song, to proclaim the glory of your name. whatever is your custom as we continue. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and became subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature and to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, 
and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand as you are able. Our closing prayer can be found on page 11 in your bulletin. Page 11. So let us pray together. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious under, unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 460 in our hymnal, and we're going to sing verses 1 and 4. Number 460. forth in the glory of the well-beloved Son. Alleluia, alleluia.
But there are other there are other groups that are going to be using in front of the camera. But they're going to be out as our goals. So they pay for forward and we got them all the way to the It's no problem. Well, yeah, I do too on the cameras. It's not just whether or not to use cameras. I will just take it for a while.
Edward, are you breaking things up here? Uh, no, that was Loretta's. <laughs> I, actually, I did 